Syukran Ustaz Idris Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Wa alaikum salam Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Rabbi syrah li sadri wa yasir li amri Wa halulun datam milisani wa qawli Rabbi yasir wa la tuhasir Rabbi tamim bil khair Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh A very good night to everybody MashaAllah eh Today is a TGIF day Okay But MashaAllah all of you are here Okay Instead of at home eh Enjoying, enjoying yourself Enjoying your time with your friends Maybe with your family But you decided to come here instead Okay, to gain knowledge, mashaAllah. Okay, and may Allah reward every one of you, accept all of our deeds, inshaAllah, and bless all of us, and have mercy on us, inshaAllah. Amin, ya Rabbal Alameen. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, we shall start. Thank you very much for coming uh, down, okay, for this, uh, for tonight's talk. Okay, so tonight's talk will be about why God ignores my prayer. Okay, before we actually start, Can I have a show of hands? Eh? Uh, has anyone ever experienced that our prayers have not been answered before? Uh, or our prayers was not answered before? Yes. Uh, how many of us? Including myself. <laughs> yes, almost all of us, right? Okay. But what's the reason behind this? Eh? Why is it that Allah does not answer our prayers? Uh, sometimes the prayers or sometimes what we ask could be something which is so small eh? right or not eh? uh, oh Allah just give me a pay of $10,000 per month for example eh? big or small <laughs> in the eyes of Allah it's very small right or not uh, okay. but how come uh, sometimes we pray 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 but Sometimes until the person pass away also The prayer For example this specifically uh, High paying jobs and all that Allah does not answer Okay So inshallah uh, I will be sharing with you What's the reason behind this for example And what's the cause that For our prayers to be delayed Or not to be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah, Inshallah Okay So this is the introduction uh, kan, eh? So apparently some of us have started praying Hoping to get rid of hardship Yes, I have sometimes people come to me And then they ask me Ustaz, I have been praying and praying and praying Okay, I hope that Allah answer my prayers I hope that my lung suddenly change eh, to be better Okay, after started praying and all that But I find that myself In more deeper trouble eh? oh, okay. Or at the bottom of the pit For example So what should I do? Must I stop praying for example? Uh, okay. Or some of them ever come to me And then they say that At point of time At some point of time I, I stop praying Because why? Because whether I pray Or whether I don't pray It doesn't change anything uh, Okay. But is it true? Okay So later inshallah okay and help me understand how doa works okay and inshallah show me how beautiful Allah Allah's plan is by the way uh, sound checking eh? you can hear me eh? inshallah eh? okay eh? if you need me to repeat myself okay then you just raise your hand and then ask me to repeat or just give me a sign okay eh? for example eh? repeat myself for example eh? okay so one thing that we have to know Is that Allah who is Al-Mujib Okay, so Al-Mujib means Allah the one who respond to our prayers eh? Allah who respond to our supplications Okay, and just as we are certain that the Quran is true We also are certain that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Okay, the Al-Mujib eh? The one who answer our prayers And also answer our calls Uh, okay, and we should never think that Allah will not answer because by feeling so, we are denying this attribute or sifat of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Okay, and among the 99 beautiful names of Allah, 
one of the name is called al mujib okay so that's why sometimes within our supplication we will say ya mujibud da'wat wa ya qadiyal hajat ya mujibud da'wat meaning oh the one who answer our prayer da'wah means doa uh, in plural form okay the one who answer our prayer wa ya qadiyal hajat and the one who grants whatever wish that we have uh, okay so this is our so called our etiquette to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala of course when we were asking something from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala although in our opinion okay whatever that we request is something which is big but in the eyes of Allah it's actually very small eh? very small for example eh? uh, i haven't had my dinner yet uh, eh? and i'm craving for what eh? Nasi lemak, uh, example. Okay, is it easy or not to find nasi lemak here? Yeah. Easy. Eh? Uh, what are some of the shops that are still selling nasi lemak now? Huh? Gilang, oh, Gilang already tutup now. <laughs> Close already. Example, crave, eh? crave. Oh, yes, eh? grab food and all that very easy. Okay, very easy and all that. So even so like that, okay, even it's very easy request or very easy wish that we have, but of course also we must ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so this is supposed to be our adab, lah, eh? to go to be our etiquette with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, and Allah, true to Allah's word and true to Allah's attribute, which Allah is called Al-Mujib, Allah also reflect this. And echo this in his ayat, okay, in his Quran, the verse of the Quran, which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned, "Awwal bilan nashaitan rojim, wa qala rabbuku mudauni astajib lakum." Okay, and your Lord proclaims, and your Lord says, "Call on me, I will answer your prayer." Uh, okay, but how many times, eh? Today, for example, we are talking about today. How many times we actually call upon Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to answer our prayer? Uh, okay, okay. Let's go back to the nasi lemak lah. Uh, my craving now, eh? Let's see. I have not been eating nasi lemak for quite a while now because of dieting, no lah, eh? Because uh, suddenly doesn't feel like it. Okay. But suddenly the calling is now here. Eh? I want to eat nasi lemak, especially for dinner. Okay. So if let's say suddenly, eh, nasi lemak is brought to you, would you still pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to give you nasi lemak? Or no? If let's say in front of you, you know, there's nasi lemak. Of course, no lah. Eh? Because it's within your reach, right? But if let's say that nasi lemak is seems impossible. You will surely call and then to to actually ask from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? Huh? Right. Okay. So this is something which is natural for us to do. If it is something far, we would actually call upon Allah. But if it is something which is quite near, eh? suddenly Allah is not within our mind. Suddenly, although we believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, but suddenly we find ourselves like taking for granted. Eh? Uh, okay, and this certainly needs to change lah for us, because why? However small it is for us, even okay, and this is what I was taught also. Okay, everything that you want to ask or everything that you need, you must ask Allah first, and then after that, then you can actually buy, for example, like that. Uh, okay, and why is it so? Eh? Because why? And this is one of the ulama or the, our scholars, uh, I would say, tradition that before they want something or before they do something, they will ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for that matter, and then after that, then they do that matter. Okay, and this is also to give us a peace of mind that whatever we do today, we know that it is with Allah's blessings, and it is with Allah's uh, so-called acceptance, lah. Uh, and permission, uh, okay. And Allah also mentioned this. Okay, Auzubillah min ash-shaitan rajim. This one uh, commonly recited lah now. Okay, especially during the month of Ramadan. Okay, uh, 
Auzubillahi minasyaitonir rajim Wa idza sa'alaka ibadi anni fa inni qarib Ujibu da'wata da'i idza da'an Falyastajibu li wal yu'minu bi la'allahum yarshudun Okay so this is the so called last verse eh, of the ayat uh, ayat of fasting lah <laughs> okay so in the coming days insyaallah we are able to do, hear this recitation again and sometimes eh, every time isha prayer eh, the imam will recite this verse okay to the point that from i don't memorize or i have not memorized this ayat to the point that every day that time during fasting month i come to masjid to 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 do my solat tarawih okay until i memorize eh? <laughs> alhamdulillah lah. oh okay but through repetition eh? through repetition so allah says here which means when my servants ask thee concerning me i am indeed close to them eh? and i listen to the prayer of every suppliant or the one who supplicate when he call on me and let them also with a will listen to my call and believe in me that they may walk in the right way okay so the ayah actually was revealed according to a question asked by one of the bedouin to our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam okay so you know that during that time they are it is common for them to actually ask from their lord eh, from their god many gods okay so after they embrace Islam, suddenly they find that it's totally different. Eh? Okay, eh? The concept of many God suddenly focus on one God, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and then they ask our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay, so should we, you know, raise our voice when we call to our Lord Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, or should we whisper to Him? Can He hear us? And then Allah, after that, Allah reveal this verse, which Allah says, man. Right? وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ أَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيمٌ Okay? So, when, our, when my servant calls upon me, say to them that I am very near, I am very close to them. Okay? And in another verse, Allah mentioned that Allah is much more closer than our jugular vein. Closer, eh? closer than our jugular vein. Meaning what? If you were to recite, eh? or if you were to say or whisper, can Allah hear you? Can. What if you don't whisper lah? You just see in your heart. Can or not? Uh, can also eh? Yes eh? So for example, after this eh? Probably you will You will take grab lah uh, eh? To return home. And then with this uh, So-called size of crowd Suddenly sometimes you find the search eh? Can eh? The search in the pricing. Uh, even eh? If you were to whisper in your heart you just say, oh, Ya Allah, please make the fair come down. Lah. <laughs> okay. And insyaAllah, eh? Allah will make the price come down, maybe. Uh, okay. But sometimes we have to wait for a little while. Lah. Uh, okay. So this is where we need to have some patience. Okay. So insyaAllah, eh? as we discover, okay. so insyaAllah we will find what are some of the characteristics that we need to have within ourselves or we need to teach within ourselves okay in order for us to wait for Allah to grant our our wishes eh? inshallah okay yes uh, before we get to the part why Allah why is it difficult for Allah to answer our prayers uh, okay let's reflect upon why Allah does not answer our prayer first sometimes it may actually come from ourselves Eh, sometimes it may come from ourselves. Okay, so the first one is praying or getting help from other than Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Okay, uh, so I was taught, okay, by a lot of my teachers, okay, to actually ask from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala first, and then ask from other people. Uh, okay, so you need to ask from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala first. So, for example, when you seek, eh, when you are sick, then ask from Allah SWT from a cure, eh, for a cure, and then after that you go to the doctor, for example. Eh. Uh, okay. If you are hungry, then say to Allah, eh, Ya Allah, I hungry lah. Eh? I want make spicy after this, let's say lah. Eh? Yeah, with 
chocolate pie for example okay. and for the dessert I want uh, my pie make for the example eh? yes ask from Allah first <laughs> okay and then after that if you want to go and buy and then you go and buy if let's say suddenly eh, when you go there to buy that McFlurry for example like that suddenly you cannot find the McFlurry that means uh, okay, then Allah is just so happened that on that night Allah is by Allah's will is good that you don't have that McFlurry lah, let's see uh, okay. but you need to ask from Allah SWT first okay. so why is it that sometimes Allah does not answer our prayer is because why we skip that stage first eh? we skip that step first instead of asking from Allah SWT we actually straightway go to people and then you ask from the people uh, okay but because of that skipping eh, of that stage Allah there's a possibility that Allah you know lah eh, uh, kecil hati sikit lah kecil, eh? <laughs> okay so Allah said wow I give you everything eh Allah says in the Quran fa in ta'uddu ni'matullah la tuhsuha and so Allah nanti which means if you were to count the nikmat that I have given you you will not be able to count them eh? yes eh how many of us here who does not wake up who do not wake up eh? or did not make, wake up today a lot of huh? every day thousands of people die eh? every day Okay. So for us to actually be able to wake up tonight Or today, this morning Is already a blessing How many of us had our breakfast? Ah. Everyone had your breakfast? Not yet eh? <laughs> okay. Yes eh? Everyone has it Everyone How many of us had our lunch? Today Yes eh? We had our lunch today Dinner? Yes also eh? For me I haven't yet lah <laughs> Eh? Yes, eh? how many of us We really had a lot of things How many of us are healthy eh? MashaAllah, you are able to come here okay? In this blessed mosque Yes, we are healthy MashaAllah. Okay? So Allah says what You won't be able to count the blessings That I give you uh, okay? If you were to count them You will not be able to count them okay? So yes eh? So sometimes this is within Maybe we overlook eh? That we have to ask from Allah SWT before we ask from people okay. Second being heedless And doubting Allah's response You know sometimes eh, uh, again, When you ask Allah SWT okay, Oh Allah please give me a $10,000 paying job <laughs> okay, Or $10,000 salary job And then you also were doubting eh? Cannot be lah uh, I, okay lah, I doa lah For the sake of doa I doa lah Oh Allah, please get me into Harvard oh. For our uh, young audience here <laughs> But then you also doubt yourself eh? Cannot be lah So if you even doubt yourself Then how would Allah want to answer our, our prayers if that's the case okay. So of course, firstly We don't doubt Allah's response of Allah Allah's answer okay? Surely if this is what you want And then you work towards it Then inshallah eh, Allah will give it to you Inshallah But the moment you doubt it Then of course lah Because why? Allah will answer according to your prayer Allah will answer according to the To the state of your heart eh? okay? So if your sincerity is not that Full eh, 100% then of course no lah Allah will also give you Not 100% uh, okay. And another way is From being Heedless eh? Heedless meaning what? Negligent And heedless heart That means what? You don't really believe lah uh, You don't really believe in Allah's Allah's might eh? Allah's authority Allah's power Okay So because of this Because of our doubt Okay. You know sometimes, for example, when we ask our parents eh, uh, Mom, I want $10 can Wow, eh? $10 can The moment your parents sense this doubt eh, within your, your question Then there will be negotiation eh? Why you need the $10 for? Um, 
you know to buy some stuff what stuff <laughs> how much is the stuff $3 then why you ask for me $10 then I give you $3 lah <laughs> but the moment you ask from your parent eh, mom I want $10 lah urgent you know then your mom also okay 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 so what's that urgent <laughs> okay so of course your mom or your parents also the likelihood of your parents answering eh, or granting you your wish is also high okay so of course eh, it depends on your sincerity mashallah okay and thirdly being impatient oh, okay I know that some of you you have started working already including myself eh? but the moment you push your boss eh? boss 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 <laughs> okay I want this uh, I want this uh. when you're going to give me this uh, the moment you become more impatient and being pushy the moment that eh, he's going to take his time <laughs> so same goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the moment we become stu- we become or we start become pushy eh? then of course eh Allah said what eh you asking from me and then you start become pushy uh, then you have to wait lah until okay the moment that you least expect it then inshallah I shall grant to you eh? inshallah okay fourth earning unlawful income this one probably doesn't doesn't apply to us right or not any one of you working in brewery or selling uh, what fragrance bakwa <laughs> and all that <laughs> no lah eh? okay so from where is this eh? unlawful income eh? unlawful income okay something which is yeah, illegitimate for example eh? okay within our religious sphere sphere eh? for example Okay, where is this? Actually, uh, sometimes we overlook on our time. Okay, you know that when we work, we are being paid in full, right? Yes. Eh? Even during our working time, we were playing Facebook. Right? We were playing IG. Eh? Clash of Clans. Eh? Uh, I don't know lah. Clash of Empire. I don't know lah. Eh? With this one. <laughs> I've seen some of my friends playing but we were talking about what we were doing or we are doing this within our working hours eh? especially now right we are working from home uh, are you sure now you are working 8 hours counting eh? really eh? counted 8 hours no right okay some days suddenly you feel your eyes close eh? accidentally <laughs> Some days you feel a little bit more tired. You don't you don't report work on time. But at the end of the month, what happened? Do you get your pay in full? You still got your pay in full, right or not? Yes. Okay. So what about the time that you didn't really work eh, during that time? Okay. Is it considered as unlawful income? Okay. Masha Allah. Eh? But mashallah, ya, Allah does not even decrease our pay. Eh? We still receive our pay in full. So that's why sometimes some of the people they find that suddenly whatever they earn, eh, suddenly they, they they don't know eh, where all this money go to. Uh, okay. So yes, eh, we really have to be mindful in when we are within our working hours. Uh, okay. So my boss, eh, my former boss, ever told me, uh, okay, <clears throat> he said what? Once you are at the door of your workplace, then you have to make your resolution. You have to renew your intention. Uh, okay, you have to renew your intention, saying that what? Okay, starting from the moment I enter my my the door of my workplace. Insha'Allah, this will be my ibadah time. Eh, ibadah time. Okay? So, if you were to work, eh, for example, 9 hours to 10 hours, for example, and then you intend all these hours to be your ibadah, 
Okay, what happen to you? You will be mindful of your hours. You will be mindful of your moments. Eh? The mo every moment within your working hours, you will be extra careful, and you will find yourself extra productive for that day. Uh, okay, so this is one of the reason also. Okay, and the next reason will be severing ties of kinship. Okay, and committing sins, for example, whereby our Prophet Muhammad SAW mentioned the doa of any one of you may be answered by Allah as long as he does not involve a bad deed or severing kinship ties. Some people, especially now, eh, now is the time that we have to connect, reconnect our kinship with our family. Okay, especially last last year Hari Raya, we cannot do visiting, right? Ah, okay. So how do we actually maintain the ties of our kinship within our family members, our relatives, eh? our friends, our parents' friends? Okay. So this is the time that we try to re-establish back the ties of kinship with our family members, our relatives. Because why? Those who did not maintain, eh? and those who cut the ties of kinship, then okay, Allah very difficult for Allah to even grant their doa and their wishes uh, okay and with, them, with our friends also eh? with our colleagues also I know that sometimes our job uh, okay our workplace eh, will be a little bit challenging eh? people go there to just work and then after that uh, your pasal lah <laughs> okay <laughs> eh? uh, after that your pasal okay. once I go back home or once my work finish then your problem that's your problem already, not my problem. Okay? But our colleague is considered as our second family. Eh? Okay? After we spend a lot of time in our family, the second is actually our workplace. Eight, nine hours, ten hours. Eh? So we need to, to, to establish kinship with our... Not kinship, lah, establish time with our colleague. But I understand, sometimes the job nature is not such that way. Sometimes, eh, your colleagues are waiting, eh, only, eh, waiting the time to throw you under the bus, right? Yes, eh. So, despite, you also have to ask from Allah's help, okay, to guard us against all these toxic people, okay, and somehow to save us from all these people, eh, yes, eh, yes, okay. So, must ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the way, if you have any question, then you can actually raise your hand and you can just uh, recite lah, eh? okay? Or you can just say out your question, eh? okay? And Allah also say, when my servant asked thee concerning me just now, okay, is one of the uh, verses that we have recited just now, okay? So in order for Allah to grant our prayers, Allah said what? Let them also with a will listen to my call, or answer my call, eh? Which whatever that Allah asks us to do In terms of prayers In terms of zakat eh, Fasting and all that okay, Then we have to answer Allah call, Allah's calls first eh, And believe in me okay, That they may walk in the right way okay? So that's why sometimes you see It's kind of like unfair eh? We want Allah to answer our prayers But then we don't want to answer Allah's call Allah say pray on time. We tak pernah relax first. Watch Netflix first lah. <laughs> we are in the middle of the okay, eh? crash landing on you ni. For example, sorry eh, I just happen to see the <laughs> see the title only. <laughs> okay, I have not even watched that lah. Okay, and then you know Netflix eh, sometimes very haunted eh, or very haunted. <laughs> Okay. Every time they release new uh, new titles, then they will prompt you, right? They will give you notification. Eh? Uh, okay. So of course, eh, when we want Allah to answer our prayers, okay, then of course we have to answer Allah's call first, which is Allah's prayer, lah. Okay. When it comes praying time, then we answer Allah's call first. Then inshallah Allah will answer our prayer. Okay? Inshallah. Okay. Next. How dua or supplication works? Ah, okay. This is something that suddenly or sometimes we often overlook. Okay, in Arabic, eh? 
So there's three types of requests that we have to know. Okay, the first is from higher rank to a lower rank, and this is what we call tolab. Eh, tolab. Tolab means instruction. So for example, eh, if your boss asks you to do something, you feel obliged to do, na? Of course, you feel obliged to do. Okay, and this is what we call instruction. Okay, tolab eh, in the Arabic, and then from the same rank. Okay, you and your colleague. Okay, and this is maybe request or favor, eh? ultimas. Favor, eh? favor or request. Uh, so, for example, tonight, eh? for tonight. Okay, I ask Susa Idris, Susa Idris, can uh, borrow me laptop or not for my presentation? Susa Idris, mashallah, eh? he is more than helpful. Laptop, not just laptop, eh? You see controller, microphone, <laughs> everything, eh? MashaAllah. So, this is what we call ultimates of favor. Okay? But, and then, the third one is from a lower rank officer to a higher rank officer. And this is what we call dua, supplication. So, when we, when we make dua to Allah SWT, what does it mean? We acknowledge that we are of a lower rank and asking from favor from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala so we have to change our attitude eh? you are asking from Allah you know ah, you are making dua you know and then you expect that Allah fulfill everything cannot okay, lah ah, eh? not fair lah eh? you know when you ask from your parents something eh? pa ah, can buy for me PS5 or not Then of course your father also may answer or may grant you or may not grant you, right? Okay. So same goes to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That's why it's called doa. Okay. When we make doa, that means we acknowledge that we are kecil lah. Eh? Okay. <coughs> That's why we have to be humble. Eh? Uh, this is our etiquette. Eh? This should be our etiquette with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That's why when we ask something from Allah. We have to humble ourselves. Oh Allah, I am weak. I don't have anything. I am miskin. Although we have cars, we have <laughs> big house. <clears throat> but in front of Allah, you just have to appear like that. Oh Allah, I just need iPhone 12 Max or iPhone 12 Pro. <laughs> okay? I know I don't have anything, Ya Allah. Okay, so yes, eh, this should be our attitude with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And if you look at our history, eh, past history, we find that Subhanallah, all of the previous people and the previous nations of the previous Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you can find that even they also experienced this. We look at the Prophet Noah Alaihi Salam. He preached to his people for five hundred years. And yet a handful only eh, embrace his religion to the point that in some narration or in some opinion of the scholars, only 80, eh, 80 people within 500 years actually embrace his religion. Right. If you look at your KPI, eh, <laughs> let's say that eh, I give you one year, one people only. <laughs> eh, 500 years, at least you get. 500 people but this one 80 people 80 people only meet KPI or not? it doesn't meet KPI key performance indicator ok but yet Prophet Noah AS, he was ever patient ever patient to Allah SWT hairdresser of Fir'am's daughter Ma Shitoh his name is Ma Shitoh Sha'ari binti Fir'aun Okay Some people That's why some of us We name our daughters eh, As Mashita Right no? uh, Okay I have a friend By the name of Mashita And all that Mashita is not the name of the person eh, But it is just the occupation Mashita means hairdresser uh, Okay hairdresser But if you want to name your child Mashita also can Because why? Okay, this person, subhanallah, eh, 
during Mi'raj eh, when the Prophet Sallallahu was doing his ascension to the heavens the Prophet Sallallahu smell a very pleasant smell from far away okay that's supposed to be one of the so called within the, the the gardens of paradise and then the Prophet the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Wasallam asked Angel Jibreel what is this smell <coughs> eh? what is this nice smell and Angel Jibreel Alayhi Salam said what this is the smell of Mashita. Eh? Okay, Mashita, Sha'ar binti Fir'aun and his family. Hey, sorry, his and her family. Because what during that time he was she was combing, eh? She was combing the the, the the hair of the daughter of the Fir'aun. And then accidentally the, the, the comb fell. And then he said what? Uh, Bismillah. She said Bismillah. In the name of Allah. And then when the daughter of the Fir'aun asked her, is that, are you calling to my father, Fir'aun? And then she said, what? No, I'm calling upon the Lord of the world, the name of the Lord of the world. Okay? And then of course, after that, Fir'aun got to know, and then Fir'aun asked her, eh? so do you want to denounce whatever faith that you have? Then she said, no, my Lord is Allah. Then Fir'aun prepared a fire pit, eh? And then ask her and all of her family members to actually to be thrown in the fire. Okay, and these stories were not mentioned in the Quran, of course, right? And nobody knew, eh? Because why? This was in the time of Fir'aun, right? No? But mashallah, eh, after more than maybe three or four thousand years, suddenly this story were was revealed back again, resurfaced back again. Because why? Because you see, this is what Allah give, eh, for those who for those who are ever so called loyal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay and Allah will actually tell their stories to to the people after that okay and yes eh, this Mashita she experienced patience or not yes she was very patient okay don't you think that within her heart she would actually wish that suddenly miraculously the fire suddenly put off <laughs> okay or the, ex, the fire suddenly be is extinguished? Yes or not? Sometimes yes, right? We always hope for that. Eh? Miraculous or miracles to happen. But no, it did not happen. <coughs> she still were. She and her family were thrown into the fire. Still. Okay. And then Prophet Muhammad SAW, eh? his supplication for his uncles, both of his uncles, like Abu Talib and also Abu Lahab, but still they died in disbelief okay and lastly Sayyidatina Maria as how we actually uh, we can actually uh, recite or we can actually read the story of Sayyidatina Maria the mother of Nabi Isa AS, when she was told that she was pregnant eh? okay and then she said what I would rather die than facing my people did Allah make her die Allah does not make her die okay? and Allah also let her meet her people but Allah give Allah's help or not? yes, eh? Allah give his help Okay. so if you were to tell ourselves eh? oh, Allah, Allah doesn't answer our prayer uh. tonight I want make spicy also Allah does not answer example lah. Uh. Oh, murtaba eh? also Allah does not answer you look at the past, eh? you look at the history, mashallah, and eh? these are big things, eh? okay, and, and still also, eh? these people were patient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's test, and then their story were revealed to us, their story were, were told to us again and again, mashallah. Eh? So what do they get? Okay, the people who are patient, what do they get? Expatients of sins. Okay, to the point that when Allah tests us with something, okay, if we remain patient, Allah cuci, eh, wash all our sins. Subhanallah. Eh? To the point that when we return to Allah SWT with zero sins. Zero. Eh? Talking. Okay, that's why some of us, we experience pain, eh? illness, sickness before we return to Allah SWT. Because why? And this is Allah's planning. Because Allah wants to wash every sins of us 
Okay, every since of ours So that when we return to Allah SWT We return in a clean slate eh? Okay, so that's why sometimes you know When you see the face of The people eh Who have just passed on Suddenly their face become Illuminated eh? Eh? Their face become Calm eh, relaxed But you know that they suffer eh For how many years eh They have been suffering eh, with their illness Okay, and this is one of the biggest blessing and biggest mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huh? Allah's honor, for example, the story of the Mashita. Eh? Although, eh, 4,000, 3,000 years ago, nobody knew about her. Nobody. But the story resurfaced. Okay? And we look at our scholars, eh? MashaAllah. For example, Pergas. Eh? Pergas had uh, come up with a book we call Obor Umar. The torch bearers of Islam, eh? okay, like in Singapore, the torch bearers of Islam in Singapore, okay, and the first series of the Obor Obor Umar book, I think I only know about twenty percent of this of our scholars in Singapore, but what happened to them suddenly? Masha Allah, eh? they gain fame after their demise, and this is Allah's honor showing to them, okay, and whatever they did. Allah will not let it go to waste Allah will tell whatever their contributions to the people after that Okay And inshallah eh, If you remain patient to Allah SWT Your stories will be told Even uh, Okay When you have Grandchildren eh, Great great grandchildren Inshallah Yes eh, your, your stories Your contribution will be told to them okay? Of course living examples as of now also and lastly you will be paradise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay of course we will attain paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay let's say lah if we were to do all this eh? <laughs> eh? masha Allah eh? let's say if we were to do all this okay but why is still eh? why still some of our prayers are not answered <laughs> we said last time I take picture, you know, whatever you ask me to do. Eh? Still, eh, my prayer still not answered. I still didn't get BMW now, eh? or a 10,000 paying job, big houses, uh, motorbikes. Eh? I did what you asked me to do. Okay. One thing that we have to know also that Allah is Al Hakim. Al Hakim meaning what? Allah is the most wise eh? We know that we want something Yes But Allah knows best what's for us Okay And Al-Hakim remains one of the Attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Okay So that's why he will give us the best Not second best eh? But he will give us The best Okay And he may delay answering your prayer For a number of reasons one of them is to test your trust in him. Like you say lah, oh Alhamdulillah, for me, eh, I'm a Muslim now. <laughs> eh? You tell that to your friends. Oh, Alhamdulillah, I've never, you know, I've never even missed uh, one day of fasting in Ramadan ever since I was seven years old. Eh? Because why you just let your friends say, what? Well, I started fasting in full when I was ten years old. Huh, ten years old? Yeah, yeah, Alhamdulillah, you know, six years old, I already fasting. <laughs> Started fasting in full, some more. Okay, so when you declare that, MashaAllah, eh, you have been steadfast, you are now having full faith, then of course, lah, you need to be tested too. Uh, eh? It's only fair that Allah test, lah. Oh, yeah, it's shit, eh? Okay, I test a bit, lah. Okay, by delaying some of your some of your prayers, eh? and Allah knows when is is it best to answer. For example, let's look at our friends. Eh? Okay, last time when I was still schooling, that time people say that what? Hey, you need to you need to work hard. You need to study hard. If not, then you don't have any future. That's what they told me. Oh, eh? hey, why you want to become ustad? Why you go to madrasah? <laughs> Eh? What are you going to become after this? 
But if you look at the people who are working now, you can see that their journey is different. Right? Some of them, they go through the long way. Eh? ITE, NITEC, higher NITEC, then diploma and all that. After that, then they even complete their PhD. Eh? Right or not? Yes. Eh? MashaAllah. Some of us, we were in the express route, which is wow, eh? express train and then uh, JC. After that, university. After that, we stop. <laughs> Penat lah. <laughs> Tired lah. Okay, after that, we stop. And then, if you look at some of our parents, they don't even have PSLE. Eh? Right, no? But Allah provide for them, no? Yes, still Allah provide for them. Okay. So, now you can see that, yes, of course, you have to work hard. But the our route, eh, our journey, doesn't determine our future. Okay, I have a friend who entered NTU, eh, for his bachelor, for his degree course. Okay, and then he dropped out. Right, eh, he dropped out. After that, he joined SIM, eh, Singapore Institute of Management, University, and then now he was finishing his masters in NTU. MashaAllah okay. Yes, sometimes At first, it won't work out It didn't work out Yes But that doesn't mean that You should stop That's why sometimes When we are given something prematurely What will happen to us? We cannot cope We fail That's why Allah knows When's the best time Allah delay it To give it to you At the best moment So that you can cope right. InsyaAllah and lastly, to make us work harder, of course, lah. so we are prepared. Okay? So, that years that Allah delay is for us to prepare ourselves. Then, inshallah, when comes the time, then you are able to cope and then you are able to handle it well. Okay? Okay, a word of wisdom from Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib. Eh? I am thankful when my supplication is granted by Allah as this is what I want. However, I am more thankful if my supplication was not granted as this is what Allah wants. Masha Allah, eh? so humble. Eh? Okay, our companions, eh? the, the Prophet's companions. Because why? what you want, if that is answered by Allah, of course we are happy, correct? But are you sure that is what Allah wants for you? Uh, eh? So even after what you get, eh? or what you get what you want. Okay, suddenly, eh, sometimes we we have this consciousness, eh, like, I'm not sure, no, eh, is this best for me? But if your prayers are not answered, are not answered by Allah SWT, you know that Allah wants best for you. And this is what Allah wants best for you. Okay, and this is what our Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib say. Okay? And Allah also mentioned eh, in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَعَسَىٰ أَلْ تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ But it is possible that you dislike something that maybe it is good for you and it is possible so that you love something that thing is bad for you. Eh? For example, eh, like our young audience here, you like chocolate? Yes? Alright. If I give you 10 Ferrero Roche, will you finish up 10? No, MashaAllah. So one day, only one. But good or not? The taste and all that? Good, right? Eh? MashaAllah, eh? you really have self control. Eh? For me, I don't know when I was at your age. <laughs> My mother has to control me. Eh? One only. <laughs> Tomorrow, us again <laughs> for another one. <laughs> okay? But yes, that's something that we like, something that we love. Is it good for us or not? Sometimes? Sometimes it's not good for us. Uh, okay? So same goes to what our yearning. Right? Something we yearn for, some, sometimes we yearn for something, but it may not go, it, may, it might not be good for us. So that's why Allah said what? Asa anta krahu shayhan wa wa khairul lako. For example, like chores, eh? Anyone of you like to do house chores or not? 
like to do dishes iron clothes wash your clothes uh, raise your hand eh? how many of you like that <laughs> eh? nobody likes it nobody raise your hand eh? except for me <laughs> yes eh? we don't like right or not but is it good for us good for us eh? sure <laughs> our cleanliness and all that eh? yes good for us our hygiene okay so that is something why Allah does not answer our prayer yet yet eh? And Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab Radiallahu anhu mentioned I am not worried whether my separation is granted or not I am more worried that I am not given the guidance To continue making supplication to Allah Because why? Sometimes when our supplications are answered Suddenly we forgot Allah totally Right or not? On the last day of our exam What happened? Habis eh? All diet goes south eh? All our timing, yeah. <laughs> okay. We go back home late and all that. Yes, yeah, eh? because why? Suddenly we feel free eh? from any difficulties. Okay, and our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, for whoever the door of doa open, for him the doors of mercy are also open. So that's why eh, Sayyidina Umar he was really afraid eh, that Allah make him forget. Okay, to, to 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 supplicate to Allah anymore just because why Allah grant him his own eh? yes eh? so which one is of greater harm eh? getting your doa answered or getting, getting your doa answered and then after that you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay so that's why Allah will give you at the most appropriate moment okay and our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu ever mentioned there is no Muslim who does not offer any dua in which there is no sin or severing of family ties but Allah will give him one of the three things in return eh? number one either he will answer his dua sooner sometimes we just make intention eh? suddenly whatever we wish for suddenly arrive yes eh? okay second he will store it up for him in the hereafter Yes, eh? in the hereafter, Allah ever mentioned, okay, the Prophet Sallallahu ever mentioned also that people will come in the hereafter before Allah with mountains of rewards, mountains of rewards. Okay, and one of the rewards is through fasting. Because why fasting, the reward for fasting has no limit. And Allah mentioned this, okay, that for every worship, Allah has put a cap eh? For example If you do prayer to Allah If you pray to Allah SWT The maximum cap That you can receive Is this much Except for fasting That Allah Will reward you himself And there's no cap Even if Allah Want to give you One trillion rewards eh? Allah will give you One trillion pahala For fasting Okay For fasting eh? So this one Is in store for us in the hereafter if Allah does not grant our our doa okay and thirdly he will divert an equivalent evil away from him because of it for example eh, you really want to buy car but you cannot buy car if you look at our roads eh, every day there are accidents right or not how can you be involved in accident if you don't have car Okay. So this is a a better Allah want to divert a more equivalent evil way or a more equivalent calamity. Okay, or more bigger calamity. That's why Allah does not answer our prayer for that prayer, eh? for that prayer specifically. Okay, and the Prophet's companion said, "We will say a lot of du'a." He said, "Allah is more generous." Eh? So, Okay. So now Alhamdulillah we have learned uh, okay. So how do we actually make prayer to Allah SWT Sometimes the way we pray to Allah SWT Also determine when Allah will answer our prayers okay. So firstly of course be humble uh, eh? Always put a smile no lah, eh? Always lower your, yourself When in front of Allah SWT Okay, 
So say to Allah, Oh Allah, I don't have anything without you. For example, humble yourself eh? in front of Allah SWT. And then send salawat to our Prophet Muhammad SAW. Sometimes I hear people supplicate without salawat. Eh? Oh Allah, give me this, give me that. Straight way, eh? straight way. That is not the etiquette of asking from Allah. Okay, so that's why the Prophet SAW also mentioned what? Every dua is kept back. Until you send blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So that's why if you look at If you happen to go to uh, Apa tu uh, Jema'ah prayer inside the mosques eh? And then when you pray jema'ah with your family members With your father, your parents and all that Usually your parents will start with Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in For example eh because why this is the etiquette of asking Allah eh? So that's why Alhamdulillah we look at our parents We look at our family For example Allah maintain that tranquility sometimes. Eh? Allah maintain that calmness within the family Because why we make prayer to Allah SWT With all the requirements uh, okay? With all the recommendations okay? And give thanks to Allah by saying Alhamdulillah That's why we say Alhamdulillah Ya Rabbil Alamin Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad And then you close also With that same tune Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Wa alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin You see you open with Alhamdulillah and Salawat You close also with Alhamdulillah and Salawat uh, Okay That is one of them Adab of the etiquette of making dua And of course positive thought of Allah SWT Which is what we call Husrullah eh? As Allah mentioned I am as my servant thinks I am If you think positive of Allah Then yes Allah will return the same favor Okay Okay we are about to end inshallah Okay and this is what Allah said in his hadith kursi Okay eh? The Prophet ﷺ said, Verily, your Lord is generous and shy. If his servant raises his hand to him in supplication, he becomes shy to return them empty. You see, Allah is the most wealthy and most bounteous. What is 10,000 to him? What is condominium penthouse eh? you need to him? What is a private house to him Nothing To him is nothing okay? So if you ask from Allah SWT Allah will give you At least something Okay That's why MashaAllah My wife eh, Every time When I was about to leave My house for work My, my wife will tell me what, no? InsyaAllah Today Allah will give you Six million dollars Six million dollars Six dollars also we don't know eh? We get a lot today I say what? Amin ya Rabbil Alamin Because if not six million at least Six dollars also Okay lah Rather than Zero eh? At least something Right what? Yes at least something So Try to do this eh? Every day Ask Allah eh? Ask Allah Okay, if not everything that Allah give you, at least Allah give you something, a little bit, a fraction of it, eh? a fraction of it, inshallah. Okay, and do not stop making dua because nobody who makes dua is forsaken. Eh, mashallah. And this is what our Prophet Muhammad SAW mentioned. Okay, so now that we have learned, although our prayers might not be answered by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in this near future, but does, but don't stop making doa to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, anybody have any question? Or shy to ask? Eh? <laughs> uh, if you have any question, then you can ask. This one I have to flash this, eh? Because I get this <laughs> the, the, the template from uh, Slides go lah <laughs> Okay
So let's give credit eh? uh, Okay Okay, any question or? Okay, if there's no question or maybe eh, if you have something, okay, then I will, I will be staying for a while. Uh, okay, but we end the session first. Lah. Can eh? everybody? Eh? Okay, we pray together that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our deeds. Okay, this month and the month of Ramadan, the coming months of Ramadan, inshallah. May whatever we learn today or tonight benefit us, benefit our family members, benefit our friends, benefit our colleagues, our co-workers. Okay, and may Allah meet us or let us meet the month of Ramadan, although it's just how many days away. But of course, eh, nobody of us can guarantee that we will remain alive until that day. But we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah lengthen our life to meet the month of Ramadan and of course and also to meet the Laylatul Qadr insyaAllah that worth one lifetime of ibadah insyaAllah eh? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim Wa salatu wassalam Wa ala syafa albiya wa al-musalim Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Allahumma anfa'na bima alamtana Rabbi alimna alladhi yanfa'una Rabbi faqihna wa faqih alana Wa qarabatin lana fi dinina mahali kutri untha wa dhakar Rabbana atina fi dunia hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa bina adhab al-nar اللهم اختم علينا اللهم اختم لنا علينا بخصم الخاتمة ولا تختم علينا بسوء الخاتمة الله اللهم بارك لنا في شعبان وبلغنا رمضان اللهم بارك لنا في شعبان وبلغنا رمضان اللهم بارك لنا في شعبان وبلغنا رمضان اللهم إنا على الصيام وعلى القيام وعلى قراءة القرآن وعلى غد البصر وحفظ اللسان وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صلى الله عليه Thank you very much everybody والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, Thank you Ustaz Tullah for this uh, wonderful sharing Thank you for all of you for staying up until 9, 10, 10, 10. Uh,